Just nine games to play for Argyle this season, but boy, are they well placed for those playoff places in Skybet League One. Thanks in part to Tuesday night. Covered yet? I don't think I have. What a night it was at Home Park. And before you know it, we're back at it again. Good afternoon. I'm Charlie Price. This is Argyle TV. And it's Argyle against Accrington Stanley here at Home Park in a very, very blustery but sunny conditions. It's another big one for the Greens. It might not have that same buzz and feeling as Pompey did on Tuesday night, but it's equally as big for the Greens this season if they are going to be in those playoff places come the end of April. Uh, I'm still on a bit of a come down to be honest. Uh, joining me this afternoon as he was on Tuesday night is the former Argyle striker Ian Stonebridge and I mean let's have a little look back at Tuesday Ian. I mean it was uh, it was an incredible night wasn't it? Yeah it was awesome you know the, the atmosphere inside the ground the result obviously um, still recovering a little bit from those, all those added minutes, which are, again I'm not exactly sure where they all came from, but we got through it, and, and yeah, getting that right result felt felt really massive. There was a real feeling. We spoke after the game, a real feeling about the occasion that day, wasn't there? Yes, Portsmouth are a side that we've played a lot and have had big games against in the past, but there was a real sense that that, that was a huge game to get the win and mostly in part because Pompey were right up with us aren't they in that chase yeah we I think we talked about it you know at, at great length before the game it was a, a real chance for for Argyle to put a marker down in relation to you know their intentions between now and the end of the season and again some of those recent results some of those games maybe were expected to win but certainly not all of them in it and in the manner that we have and and again that that game to put put that kind of uh, performance down against Portsmouth one of the rivals for for that promotion picture is is really important today might be a, a slightly different one Accrington won't bring as many fans for one they uh they're probably just about outside that playoff picture probably too far behind um but what a day for football I mean well, actually, I say that. It's a bit, it is a bit windy, which probably isn't the ideal condition, is it? Yeah, you're a braver man than me. I've still gone with a big coat today, but it, it, is, it is a little bit chilly. But again, yeah, it's br brilliant with the sun out and, and hopefully everyone will come in, in a cheerful mood after, after Tuesday night and we can create another good atmosphere inside Home Park. Well, I'm sure that's what everybody uh, wants. Everybody wants inside the ground. We have quite a lot coming up, actually, between now and kickoff. We'll obviously have team news for you in just a couple of moments' time. We'll hear from James Bolton, the man at the centre of that defensive unit that's done so well in recent times and we'll also be chatting to Brendan Galloway hopefully in about 20 minutes time as he is recovering from that knee injury that he picked up against Wickham here uh, just before Christmas but I know you've all been watching it on loop pretty much since Tuesday night but let's relive that win over Portsmouth shall we
great night, wasn't it? So everybody enjoyed themselves. It was um, a great win, good performance, and and yeah, it was a it was a nice day yesterday. Could relax, but straight away now we're on to planning for Aki. Exactly, and we spoke after the game, and you know I asked you what's the key to taking this momentum into the, you know the last nine games of the season. You said belief, energy. Guessing it's the same, but how important is it to not let that game against Portsmouth kind of be the big moment of the season? Yeah, um, it's so important, and we've said that a few times uh, over the course of the season to the players. So I remember the performance at Sheffield Wednesday at home. Everyone was you know, delighted, and we said that can't be the highlight, and then. The Chelsea performance as well, that was another one where this couldn't be the pinnacle of the season and so the message is the same and the players to be fair have took it on board every single time, they've dealt with each game as it comes as we would want them to and they've been different class in their attitude and I'm sure today when they come back in today and they're training they'll be ready to go. They're, or be pleased, obviously, that we won, but they understand that Aki is another massive game. How much confidence does it give you as a coach and a coaching staff, I suppose, that if you make changes to a team, you know it's not going to disrupt yeah. the way the side's been playing? Yeah, it's it's really good because we can feel that like we can pick a team based on what we feel is going to win that next game. And if that means resting a couple or taking a couple out to put somebody else in for, for whatever type of game it's going to be, then we feel confident that we can go out and get a result. So. As I keep saying, that's what we want to build a squad for. And we've got all the players who are ready. There hasn't been a drop-off in performance when we have made changes. And I say we're going to need that as well. Because if something does unexpectedly happen, then someone's ready to step in. And, and yet we'll just deal with it and move on and keep trying to get results. Just finally, you know, the fans made a huge impact on, on Tuesday. Unbelievable atmosphere. Might not be like that every single game between now and the end of the season. But how much of a role do they have to play? We, we want it. We want it full. I know it doesn't matter that it was it was Portsmouth at home. Like the atmosphere that the, all our fans should be really excited because, as I say, we're in the playoff hunt. We're in the mix of trying to do something really unbelievable this season. So we want it to be like that. That atmosphere, because as I said on Tuesday night, it helps. Like that second half atmosphere in particular. And look, it's a give and take thing. The players have got to go and put performances in and get the crowd going. Like. Look, I thought Joey Edwards just epitomised that uh, on Tuesday night when his performance, especially second half, just to get everything going. That's what you need your captain for. But but the players need to drive it and then the fans need to get behind us because you know they'll get us over the line. Yeah, I know we could probably watch that on loop, couldn't we, forever and ever. It was such a such an incredible evening. And actually I've got to say, talking to the manager after that game, doing all the post match reaction, I was <laughs> The most buzzed I think I've ever been. It took me quite a long time to get to get down from it, but it just shows the importance of that game and what it meant and the atmosphere and how everybody got behind the side. And as the gaffer was saying there, Stephen Schumacher, that's what we want for the rest of the season. And you know, it is about taking that momentum, isn't it, Ian? In, into these final nine games, we can't make that Portsmouth game the the pinnacle, the best. No, there's a, there's a lot of big games to come, and I think you know the. If you like the, the psychological energy that I think from from a player's and, and manager's point of view that can go into a game like that when it's built up to such an extent could be, you know, detrimental to what comes afterwards. So I think it's really important that in today's game they they, you know, come out really positive at the start of the game and make sure that they're you know um, really focused on their game plan in terms of how to beat Accrington and not caught up in the kind of euphoria if you like of, of Tuesday night. Is that easy to do though? You know how, how easy, how difficult is it to put like a massive performance and result like that to the back of your mind when you have a game so soon after? I think it's tricky, but as soon as the game starts, you know they're, they're professional players and they'll be you know absolutely focused on what's what's going on out there, and the coaching staff as well, and 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 the manager I'm sure will have been you know talking about that since then in terms of right that's gone now that's great that we've won, but ultimately the next thing we've got to do is is win on Saturday, and that's that's key for them because just the feeling around the city you know we'll be getting more and more excited you you went through it you know do you feel it when you're walking around the town when you're seeing people in the street that that sense of go on do it again on the weekend yeah i think you know the the type of city i think that plymouth is is it's it's difficult to avoid that and, and it's a great thing that brings brings the city together you get get that um you know that positivity that builds, and, and just I think, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's what the, it's about. Yeah, yes, and the buzz around the ground on a on a match day. I think you know it starts to get that 
bit more special and I think that, that can definitely help and, and rub off on the players as well. Well, it is beginning to fill up inside here. I think we're expecting about 13 and a half thousand inside the ground, which is another incredible effort. Again, well over 10,000 all the way through this season. Uh, let's have a little look at the team news then for this afternoon's game. In a couple of changes made by Stephen Schumacher for this one. Stephen Sessegnon, who came in for his first start, he's been replaced by Connor Grant at left wing back. And then it's a striker rotation again with Jordan Garrett coming in for Luke Jeffcott. Your initial thoughts on those? Yeah, so obviously it's a familiar shape, a familiar system. And, and I guess at the moment, um, you know, Stephen Schumacher and the coaching staff had the luxury of, you know, players that are capable in all of those positions. And I guess it's not, not a surprise again to see some kind of rotation up front. And um, I think it's, it's obviously a few games since, since Jordan Garrett started, uh, you know, against Rotherham. And again, it's you know good, likely they've identified something about Accrington that they that they want to exploit you know Jordan Garrick and Ryan Hardy together as a, as a pairing obviously pace being a key attribute there so you know my, my suspicion is they've they've identified something that they want to try and exploit today I've got to say that I mean that's a quick front line those Accrington defenders are probably looking out thinking there's going to be quite a few times they're going to be turning back and chasing yeah I think so and, and you know it might it might mean that as a result of that they have to play slightly deeper or they need a bit more protection from their from their wing backs for their back three and that can maybe open up some spaces elsewhere for Argyle to to exploit today. Let's talk about Steven Sessegnon. He came in for his first league start. I think he, he cramped up a little bit, didn't he, towards the end of the game. But I, I suppose it's 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 it says a lot about someone like him that he's you know come from a, a side in the league above, might have expected to be in the team for quite a long time. Seeing the form of Conor Grant and Joe Edwards, there's no way unless of an injury that they're going to be taken out of the side but he comes in in that sort of atmosphere that environment against a side that like to play wide so he would have probably been under pressure for quite a lot of the time and puts in that sort of performance yeah it was it was brilliant you know I, I don't think we we should underestimate the the kind of challenge of coming into not just coming into the team but coming into a game like that you know it's, it was built up by everyone around it to be such a such a huge fixture and yeah, I think I thought he did really well. He, he was positive going forwards, you know, um, showed his pace and, and his ability on the ball, and came up with some key kind of in interceptions and contributions on a defensive side of things as well. So, you know, I think he's he's obviously unlucky to to not be starting the game again today. But like we said, with the the squad that that the club has at its disposal at the moment, it's no surprise to see Connor Grant, who's obviously been so reliable, you know, right across the season, come back in today. The one other big thing that kind of gets spoken about a lot, especially on social media when you post the team news. A lot of the responses are all, look at that bench. Look how strong the replacements are. If you look yeah. at it, you've got Niall Ennis and Luke Jeff got on there, which on any other day would be a starting partnership up front. You've got Stephen Sessegnon on there. You've got Romani Critchlow, who has barely kicked a ball for Argyle, but has pedigree. You know, you've got such quality in pretty much every position. Yeah, you have. And, and again, that, that the the chance for the, the coaching staff and, and Stephen Schumacher during the game as it progresses, you know, if something's not quite going right, you've got those those options that, you know, that they're not a second a second best option. They are, you know, a, a something different that they can add into the mix that can really start to change the game. And I think particularly that's the case with the, with the, the front players. You know, they've got lots of different qualities and, and each, each of them offers something really special and, and having that off the bench at a crucial time in the game can, can be really key. Actually, it's, it's, now we've, we've got you as a striker, we always end up talking about defenders, but I am going to talk about forwards. And you quite often hear people talk about partnerships and the fact that you're used to playing with each other, you know where each other's going to move, where each other's going to go so you can link up, maybe run off a flick. It doesn't seem to be a problem with any of whatever four are chosen. Is that a rare thing, that, that, that it's like that? Yeah, I think it probably is. But again, it's perhaps it's... Uh can be slightly different as to how you define a partnership so I think probably Luke Jeffcott and Ryan Hardy when they play together they maybe play as more of a partnership than some of the other combinations in that we see Luke Jeffcott come short and link up the play and often play Ryan Hardy in around the corner um, Garrick and Hardy today there'll be a partnership but maybe it'll be a slightly different partnership and we might not see them combine directly together too often but that doesn't mean that by the runs that they make, they'll create space for each other in order to hopefully exploit the space down the sides and yeah. get in behind Accrington. Yeah. And, and, and that is, we play the same formation every week, but that's where the variety comes in, isn't it? Because of the different types of players. Yeah, it does. And, and, and like you said, within that same structure, so you've got a kind of base uh, formation, a base system there, um, but 
the different mix of players and even when we start you start talking about the differences in midfield between having Kamara in the team versus Ryan Broom and what Adam Randall and Dan, Danny Mayer bring to that central area you know that that variety in there can also change the way that 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 system plays despite the fact that it still looks the same in terms of its structure how close was that Adam Randall effort as well? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine if that had gone in. Well, we've spoken about strikers just then. We will go back to the defence because it was yet another clean sheet for the Greens on Tuesday night. Four in a row now is absolutely incredible for that back three and, and keeper and the whole unit as a well as a whole, really. One of the key members has been James Bolton, and I spoke to him earlier this week. I just think we're in a good space. Um, we've, like I said, we've, we've grown our luck a little bit at times. Um, but... I think, like I say, you, you, you make your own luck. Um, we work hard um, in the training field as well to, to make sure that we're, we're, we're solid as we can. And it's not just the defenders, it comes from the team. I think getting the the right distances and stuff like that as a team makes a big difference and I think um, it's, just, it, it's just kind of working for us at the moment and hopefully we can do more of it. One one like lapse in concentration, it's a, it can be a goal. Um, I mean, probably the higher you go up, the the less you get away with it, um, but even at this level, you, you, you do f you do find if you do something silly, then it will get it will get punished. Um, so it is it is a big it is tough, um, but like I say, we're in a good space and we're getting good momentum um, in it. So hopefully, we can just keep pushing on um, and get as many as we can. I think try not to think about it too much and just go into every game fresh start and. Um, and, and try and win the game and to be honest that's, if the clean sheet comes with it that's 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 happy days but at the moment it's it's all about three points no absolutely how how key also is it you know the communication between you know you three yeah. you know the wing backs coops behind jordan in front yeah. how often are you trying to no it's it's i think it's everything like especially in the systems of five you, you're constantly moving across um play like passing players on um Especially speaking to Jordan as well, there's players coming into his his his, his pockets and stuff like that. Um, it, it's it's massive and it does help, um, and it's something that I think we're all quite good at. I think we're all quite vocal, and I think mm. that does make a massive difference. I, I don't mind opening my mouth. I, I probably talk too much on the pitch, really. Like probably lads think I'm just talking nonsense, but I think sometimes I need to to get myself um, going. But. Um, but yeah, it's it does. It's a huge, huge thing, and it does make a difference. Just looking ahead to Saturday at Accrington, um, they're a prime example of exactly what League One's all about. You know, mid-table, probably not quite in that playoff hunt, probably a bit too far away. But then pull out a result against Sheffield Wednesday on Tuesday night, where yeah. you know they they're nullifying one of the form teams in the league. On the day, they are capable, and they actually play good football on the day. Um, they're a very, very tough side to to, to play against, and the. The manager does a, a good job there every year, um, so yeah, it, we, it's, it's, it's going to be tough, um, but we're, we're more than capable of winning the game. James Bolton there speaking to me earlier this week, and I'm delighted to say that we've got a member of the defensive unit alongside us here on Argyle TV. It's Brendan Galloway. Brendan, firstly, how are you doing? How's the knee? Um, it's going really well. Uh, the rehab's going uh, as well as it can be at the moment. Um, I think I'm a bit ahead of schedule. You know, we've got great physios, um, great fitness coaches in there that are really working hard with me, putting in tireless, uh, tireless um, hours. So it's come along really well. I'm really happy with it so far. It, it's, it's weird, isn't it? I mean, the, the environment in the physio room is always really jovial. When, when some people might think the players are in there miserable because they're not playing. But we've just seen Nick come out, Nick Fulton, the physio. Uh, we've seen Harry, one of the sports therapists, come out as well. I mean, is it important to have to keep your spirits up? When, when you are out for such a long time like that? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, the main thing for me is uh, having good people around me. And, uh, you know, we've got fantastic people, uh, all the physios, all the fitness coaches, you know, they try keep uh, my spirits up from day one. And um, as I said, it just makes life easier uh, when you're in the treatment room because sometimes you can get a bit down, you know, being injured, not playing and stuff like that. So just keep the spirits high and then also get the hard work in, which is the most important part. Knowing you though, Brendan, you're not that much of a downbeat guy, so I can imagine I can imagine it's a fairly easy job. Um, watching on at the moment, I mean, the lads are, are doing all right, aren't they? Yeah, flying. Um, you know, we've got to the business end of the season and, um, you know, we're showing what we can do, um, you know, at the um, defensive part and attacking-wise, 
you know, and we're starting to be ruthless with teams. We're starting to really, um, you know, show what we can do. The fitness levels are good. And uh, we're just working hard every game to try and win. Talk to me about the way we're defending at the moment, because it's four clean sheets in a row. Yeah, there's been a few lucky moments in there, but it's looking insanely solid, a bit like what it was like at the start of the season when you were in there as well. Yeah, you know, that's, um, you know, I was on the training pitch, you know, from day one, from pre-season, you know, um, implementing what we want to do, how we want to defend, um, you know, put our bodies on the line, you know, there's nothing better as a defender coming off with a clean sheet. You know, we've got four on the bounce right now and uh, we don't want to stop there. We want to keep those clean sheets going, uh, keep the hard work going and, you know, as I say, it's down to the players and also down to the coaches on the training pitch, you know, giving us all the uh, vital information for the games and um, it's been really good. When you go into a game when you're in this sort of form, do you just think, nah, no one's scoring against us today? Yeah, you know, you go into every game trying to think like that you know that's the mentality that we have here that's the mentality that you know all the defenders have that Matt Cooper has um, and also you know the midfielders work tirelessly for us uh, the strikers they press from the front so it's a collective thing you know but as a defender and as a defensive unit you know you want to keep a clean sheet you, you know what you, you want to be solid and you just want to protect the goal with everything that you have just want to single out Bren, um, James what James Bolton Brendan because he's he's come in uh, and he's taken the spot of a guy who played every single minute in Dan Scar uh, in a position that I think he's admitted he said he, he, he's never played in the middle of a three, but he's been absolutely incredible, hasn't he? Yeah, um, he's been absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, he had an unfortunate injury and, you know, even when I was fit and he was injured, you could see that he was working immensely, trying to get back fit as soon as possible, trying to get stronger, trying to get fitter. And now you can see the rewards uh, paying off for him. I think that since he's come in, he's been absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, he, you know, he's a real, he's a real proper defender. Uh, he wants to defend with everything that he's got, and that just shows him as a person, as a player. He wants to grow. Um, not playing in the, in the centre of the back three before, but you know, um, you know, he'll take it in his stride and uh, he'll give the team everything that he's got, and he's been fantastic. And he's a prime example, as you said. You know, start of the season with that massive down of getting the injury. I think second day of pre-season. Or something wasn't it and now he's got his chance he's in and he's doing so well and it's happened you know with Macaulay coming in with you being out yeah. it's happened when someone's had to fill in at, at right center back when Willow's been out it yeah. just seems seamless you know that's again um, everyone that's down to you know the coaches giving everyone their jobs to do on the pitch you know how we want to play how we want to defend and you know the players that we are we want to take on the information um, and we just want to put it into the games and um, give our all. But yeah, James Bolton's come in, you know, Willow's been fantastic the whole season, Mac on the left's been fantastic and um, you know, we're, you know, we're jalling each and every game and we're looking more solid each and every game. Let's talk about today. Um, keeping momentum going is the key, obviously. It's a windy old day, Brendan. <laughs> How difficult does that make it as defenders? Yeah, you know, you have to judge the ball differently on days like this. You have to, you know, take that extra half a second to think about what you want to do with it. Um, but these players are, are all uh, very experienced. Um, you know, we've all been in this position before. Windy days, windy games, and it's nothing new to us. So I think that we'll defend, you know, just how we always do. Um, and again, we'll just look to try and get a clean sheet and uh, another three points on board. Yeah, how, how you're inside that dressing room, just how confident is everybody going into these final few games? Yeah, the confidence is, is high, um, as you expect. Um, we are a confident group of lads. Um, we are a group that trust in each other every single game. So, you know, we always want to come out here and get three points. Um, and obviously now it's the business end of the season. So, you know, the focus, you know, is 100%. Um, just trying to win every game as, um, that comes, trying to pick up as many points as we can. And uh, today's another opportunity. Top stuff, Brandon. Thanks for joining us. Lovely to chat to you as always. How's the Call of Duty coming along? Um, yeah, fantastic. I'm getting better. <laughs> Top stuff. Brendan Galloway, thank you very much, mate. Enjoy thank the game. Um, hopefully see Brendan back in an Argyle shirt very, very soon because he's a top, top guy, as you can hear. And, you know, part of this integral defensive unit that's done so well this season. Let's have a quick look at the league table then, or the playoff picture, really, of Skybet League One. Um, you can see Argyle there nicely placed in fifth position at the moment. But as we've been talking about, it's incredibly tight. 
Uh, three points clear of Sheffield Wednesday and Wickham, who are, the, are just outside those playoff places. So, you know, if the, God forbid, it did slip up. Argyle did slip up today. We'd still be in those playoff places, but it's so tight there with those two in behind. You can see the game of game in hand that we have over everybody uh, over Oxford above us. If we if we win that one, we go above them again. You know, if buts and maybes, you'd probably think that the the top two are out of reach. Eight points, the difference there with Wigan having a couple of games on us, but um, 68 points at the moment. Ian has come back in to join us, Ian Stonebridge. 68 points at the moment. I think a couple of weeks ago we said 74 is the average. I reckon another 10 points possibly to make sure. I'll let you keep doing the maths, Charlie. I, I, the bit I like about it is the fact that, and, and, I, and I expect that this is what the, the coaching staff and, and Stephen Schumacher will be emphasising to the players, is it's in their hands. You know, we're, we're currently in, in those places. So if they keep getting the results that, they're, that they want and what they're going for, it's... it's you know, if we keep winning, we'll stay in those those playoff places. Kind of as simple as that, really. It sounds simple. Winning games of football. <laughs> um, let's have a look at what the other games that are going on in the league as well, because there are a couple of ones that do have particular interest for us here. I've said that those top two places are probably out of reach. We're going at home to Morecambe today. Big one for Morecambe. Um, you'd expect them to probably get a result there and Rotherham at home to Shrewsbury, similar. But then the sides around us, looking at MK Dons, they're away at Cambridge, which is, as we found out a few weeks ago, not, not the easiest place to go to. Sheffield Wednesday away at Gillingham, Sunderland away at Lincoln. There's a lot of sides away that are in those playoff places. Uh, can, we, can we ask can we ask the likes of Cambridge, Gillingham and Lincoln to do us a favour in these? Or do you think yeah, the form all these sides are in is just too formidable? Yeah, I think you know things like that are going to happen in this run-in, and, and that's, the I guess, the beauty of it. Um, and it makes the, the recent results that Argyle have got all the more important because we've, we've put, our, put ourselves in such a good position. But there'll be, there'll be still teams that go on little runs, good and bad, from now until the end of the season that might see some kind of fairly dramatic changes in those positions um, you know, before the season's over. Another couple there. So Oxford at home to, to Ipswich is a, is a really big one. Two sides looking to to stay in those uh, playoff places and then Portsmouth at home to Wickham do you, do you feel sides like Portsmouth Bolton they're away at Crewe today is this last chance of saloon for them or is it already too much I think you, you, you look at it and you think they've, they're going to have to start that run and it's going to have to be a really good run you know if they're going to make it into those places so but but that's absolutely not outside of their capabilities as, as teams and as squads so like I said, it, it wouldn't surprise me if there's still one one or two teams from that sort of area of the league that do put some results together and start knocking on the door. And, and ultimately, that whilst we're looking at the, the running that Argyle have got and, and it looks tough and it looks really competitive and it's against all the teams that are in and around us, you know, that picture could still change slightly before those games come along. And I think that could be a really interesting part of the, of the end of the season. I think interesting is is the word. It's going to be incredibly intriguing to find out what, what does happen. You'll obviously see it all here on Argyle TV, but um, today you look at it again. We say it every week. Got to win today, haven't we? Got to win today. Uh, we want to hear from you on Argyle TV. Um, get in touch with your thoughts on the game. Thoughts on the team selection. Two changes from Stephen Schumacher today with Luke Jeffcott and Stephen Sessignon dropping out with Connor Grant and Jordan Garrett coming in to replace them. So get your thoughts coming in at Only One Argyle on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook as well. Just search for Plymouth Argyle Football Club. We'll read out the best ones just before kickoff and also uh, during half time and after the game as well. So that's at Only One Argyle on Twitter or Plymouth Argyle Football Club on Facebook. If you put a picture, I'll definitely show it. Um, right, we are about half an hour away from kickoff here at Home Park on Argyle TV.
You're watching Argyle TV. We'll take a little look around what else is happening around the club at the moment. And uh, our well, tickets are in high demand. And our next away game uh, against Ipswich Town are still on sale. That's at the end of this month. They're selling out pretty quickly, though. We've only got 100 or so left. I think it's actually less than 100 now. So if you are interested in going to Portman Road, cheering on the guys up in uh, up in Suffolk, then get along to ArgyleTickets.com or the Home Park Ticket Office because they're going to need your support and that will be a, a real must-see to playoff chasing game uh, teams. Angel Warrior, uh, one of our academy players, has been nominated for the LFE Goal of the Month for February for this effort against Portsmouth that you're seeing now last month. An incredible strike from the halfway line. Uh, and Angel and his teammates were in action this morning as the academy side beat Exeter City 2-0 in Merit League One, making it three from three. And if you ever wanted to play on the pristine surface of Home Park, well, now you can. In May, after Argo complete their Skybet League One campaign, the surface of the Theatre of Greens will be offered up to members of the public for an unforgettable experience. Whether it's a team building exercise or just a fan wanting to get out on the pitch, there's something for everybody and you can check out all the details on our website. Just looking at it behind us, perfect condition and that could be you. Uh, as I said, yeah, pafc.co.uk, just type in play on the pitch and find out all the details for what you need there. Now, it's been, um, we've been running little snippets from inside the dressing room here on Argyle TV throughout the season, and we have another one of those coming up right now. Callum Burton on his teammates. Uh, Coops. Yeah. What's your room with? He's good, yeah. We have um, sort of, I've, I'm used to travelling now, so all the years that I've done it, so I, I bring a little projector and whack it on the wall in the, the room so we have like the, the games on on a Friday night or if we're staying on um, sort of a Monday night for Tuesday game we get the Monday night football on and sort of have a little cinema projector on the wall for the game yeah so it's now nah, we've we've obviously we spend so much time on the road that um, you've got to get a good sort of bond between it. I got warned about his snoring and I've only, to be fair to him, I've only noticed it once, which for the amount of away games is pretty good. But yeah, was, uh, Luke McCormick warned me about uh, the snoring. But yeah, I've only only had it once. But no, to be fair, we spend most of the time together, and we, we haven't really. I don't. There's no no issues. We just get on and enjoy it. We like having a moan up when we have single beds. We prefer doubles being both big guys. But no, it's um, yeah, we've. Good roomy, definitely a good roomy. And you can see the whole version of that, as well as all the other teammates, features, and other behind the scenes stuff that we have, like match day moments and tunnel cam on Argyle TV. It costs just £4.50 a month. So, what are you waiting for? Let's turn our attention to the visitors this afternoon. It's Accrington Stanley, and they're probably just about out of range for the playoffs in League One at the moment. 50 points with eight games for them to play. They, though, as always, are a tough nut to crack under John Coleman. A Sheffield Wednesday found out on Tuesday night.
Ross Sykes with the equaliser there for Accrington Stanley with their one and only corner. And that's going to be the uh, the challenge for Argyle today, Ian, because they, they've they got an insane record from set pieces. I can't remember exactly what it is, but they've scored the third most goals from corners or set pieces this season in the league. They got one on Tuesday night from their only corner. It's going to be the area where I think Argyle are probably going to have to be just wary, isn't it? Yeah, they certainly will. You know, if you look at their their recent away record in general, it's not fantastic. But you've got to look at that result at Sheffield Wednesday away as a, as a really strong performance from them. And yeah, I mean, from Argos' point of view, it's really it's definitely a case about of, of discipline in the right areas of the pitch and making sure that particularly with conditions as they are, you know, the, the blustery winds, that you don't give them that opportunity to get the ball in the box. You know, whether it's corners, whether it's free kicks from certain areas, I think that's going to be, you know, it's something I th I'm sure Argyle would have spoken about and hopefully they'll be, um, you know, paying attention to today. Yeah, you actually make a good point about the weather because it's one of, it's, it's probably the worst sort of conditions for defending. As I was speaking to Brendan about it just before, he said you kind of got to adjust the way you, you go for headers and, and, and whatnot. And, I think everybody bar one player of the team that played against Sheffield Wednesday for Accrington were over six foot. So they, it, th that's where they will be targeted. Yeah, and, and you know, that, that defensive organisation from set pieces becomes um, you know, even more critical. You're not, you're not, you're not going to stamp out those free kicks and corners completely. So you're going to have to defend them at some point. And it's really then about that organisation, you know, communication. And then on an individual basis, it's making sure that you know, wh whoever you're up against, whoever you're marking, that you don't let them get a run on you, that you don't get physically overpowered regardless of whether they're taller than you or not it's about making sure you can disrupt them getting a good jump and a, and a decent contact on the ball having said that they have been known under the john coleman years to, to be quite a, an attractive side they like to get the ball down play their football they've got a good pitch up at the wham stadium uh, you mentioned their away record it's, it's it's not that pretty but to get to 50 points again for Accrington stanley in the third tier of english football you know it's an incredible job they do do there, isn't it? It is, and you know, obviously in John Coleman, they've got someone who's vastly experienced and vastly experienced at Accrington. Um, you know, he he'll know how to set a team up. He'll he'll know Argyle's system inside out, and I'm sure that they'll come with their own their own plan as to how to disrupt Argyle. Um, you know, we talked we talked already, I think, about Garrick and Hardy in particular. You know, I think will be really key today in in stretching Accrington's defence and making the pitch slightly bigger. If we can push them back the way and make them defend in a deeper sense, um, that can create space in front, and then we can start getting the ball to Danny Mayer in the areas that he loves and, and has been so influential from recently. And I think that that might be a, a really crucial thing for Argyle to try and get right today. Let's have a little look at their side that they've chosen today. They've made one change with uh, Lewis out, played up front, Max Clark coming, Mitch Clark, sorry, coming in after his suspension. Uh, we, we won four-one up there, Ian, just before Christmas. But it was not, I don't know whether you did the game for Argyle TV, but it was not an easy win. The 4-1 scoreline kind of flattered Argyle towards the end. Such a tight game in that second half until Ryan Broom pinged one into the top corner. You know, scorelines like that might lull fans into thinking this could be, a, could be an easy win. But I'm, I'm pretty sure all of those players... When they go back in that change room in just a moment, they'll be drilled that this is it's going to be something similar to that. Yeah, they they absolutely will be, and you know we've already talked about the experience of the teams and the managers at this at this level. You know, Accrington will be really well organised today. You know, we talked about their set pieces, but they'll they'll know a lot about Argyle's players. They'll know and they'll know about the strength of Garrick and Hardy up front. They'll know about Danny Mayer. You know, they'll they'll already have a plan as to how they want to try and stop the ball getting to him in those areas that that he can be influential from. You know, it's up to Argyle to make sure that. They can maybe use that to their advantage if they're looking to kind of block the supply into Danny Mayer and, and stop those runs down the side from the strikers. That can bring other players into the four. So we might we might see Kamara and Edwards look to combine a bit more down that right-hand side. Um, you know, Conor Grant perhaps on his overlapping runs that we've seen so often as well can, can be a really good asset for Argyle through today's game. Yeah, and, and on that, we've spoken about the partnerships. You've, you've kind of mentioned about it there. You, you feel the way Argyle are playing at the moment, that's where their goals are coming from. They're using those wide areas and then stretching the play for the likes of Broom, Mayer, Kamara to, to have those driving runs. I think the great thing is we've got that variety. So despite the fact that we know they want to develop the game from the back and you know um, play that passing game, move, move the opposition around, switch in play, ultimately they've also got that, those assets and we've seen a, an effective, it's, it's not long ball by any stretch, it's a, it's a long pass. It's an effective ball into an area for, for the strikers to run onto. Sometimes that can be a, you know, um, 
a moment in the game where you can exploit a slight change in tactics or you're shifting the ball side to side in order to wait for that incisive moment. We saw it with Danny Mayer's pass um, to set up Ryan Hardy recently. And, and, you know, those can be the moments that can really, you know, change a game. And, and Argyle have certainly got players who are capable of that. Accrington players making their way off the pitch and into the changing rooms for their final instructions. Argyle still out down the far end from us in front of the Devonport end going foot through their final bits of preparation. Um, I asked you how the game would go against Pompey and you gave me a nice rounded figure. Uh, did you get it right? I think I said 2-1, You said 2-1. You gave it in Argyle's favour, though. Again, I won't push you for a prediction, but that'd be nice. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you see today going? I think that, that patience is going to be key. You know, we're, we're likely to have possession of the ball. It, you know, it, it tends to happen that way at home in most of the games that we've seen, and, and I'm, I'm sure that will be Argyle's plan as well. But I think that it's, it's really about how, how quickly they can create something that is meaningful in front of the goal. So can we open them up? Can we create some good goal-scoring chances early on and hopefully get one in the net, which might then change the pattern of the game as a whole? So I'm confident that Argyle are going to win the game, but it might be that we, we have to be patient for that, for that first goal today. Does it matter how many we win by or how convincing it is? No, not of course at all. it no, doesn't. No, does of course it? not. No, it doesn't. Ian, <laughs> thank you very much uh, for your help this this afternoon. You'll hot foot it up to the commentary position to be next to Rob McNichol for full match commentary, which is 15 minutes away here at Home Park. In the meantime, I'll just read through some social comments that have been coming on uh, into our, our Twitter feed at only one Argyle is what you've got to look for Sam has uh, quote tweeted our team graphic and just, just said Connor Grant back with the uh, love heart eye emoji so Sam happy that Connor's back out back out there and on that left hand side we've got Darren saying that he's made it to the pub in Benidorm and has Argyle TV on the big screen watching there enjoy it Darren thanks a lot for tuning in as well and uh, Emma just says cheering on the boys from home come on you greens thanks a lot for getting in touch please continue to do so at only one Argyle on Twitter you can find us on Facebook as well Plymouth Argyle Football Club we want to know your thoughts of the game as it is going on and we'll read out the best ones during half time now just before we do hand you away to Rob and to Ian for commentary of this afternoon's game we are as always delighted to have partnered up with online food order delivery service Uber Eats for the 2021-22 campaign. They join the club as, as an affiliate partner and will sponsor our pre-match quiz, which hopefully you've done on the Argyle app and also our Moments of the Month feature, which is broadcast across social media and, of course, on Argyle TV. And for this partnership, Argyle fans can download the app, receive a £10 discount off their first order when they spend a minimum of £15. All you have to do is use the code ARGYLE10 for ordering. Right, we're almost ready to go. A reminder that if you're watching uh, abroad, you have to switch over to ARGYLE TV and buy the match pass. If you're watching in the UK, it's audio commentary for just £2.50 with Rob McNichol and Ian Stonebridge. You can follow the game on Twitter as well at only one ARGYLE and via the live blog on our website. But coming up next, it's ARGYLE against Accrington Stanley.
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Home Park for another game as we get towards the conclusion of this wonderful Sky Bet League.